So thank you everybody for coming today. Um, my name's Representative Cal Barr, and behind me I have Representatives Munson, Miller, Senator Utke, Representative Draskowski, and Representative Lacero. And today we're here to talk about the Second Amendment and the individual right to keep and bear arms. Currently, we are one of only six states that does not have some type of protection for firearms owners in their state constitution, and we do not need to be totally dependent on the federal constitution for this. Um, one of the other states, one of those six, is Iowa that has passed through both of the chambers, and it will be sent out to the uh, uh, voters as a ballot initiative in 2020. That leaves five. California, Maryland, Minnesota, New Jersey, and New York are the only five states that currently, at that point, do not have some type of firearms protection for their citizens. I would like to take the state of Minnesota off of that list and protect those rights. So I have a uh, constitutional amendment rolled out. It's House File 986. Senator Utke has the jackets for the, uh, the House, that's the Senate version, rather. And uh, it's very simple language. It mirrors the federal constitution most of the language mirrors most of it. The right of the keep people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed, period. We believe that the citizen has the right to defend themselves, not only in their home, but against any, any other intruders, uh, 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 personal defense, home defense, and the ultimate defense against a tyrannical government, which is why that Second Amendment was put in the federal constitution to begin with. So uh, I'm, we have some other supporting groups that, uh, that also support us. African American Gun Club supports us and Pink Pistols. We have some uh, rural Democrats support us, support this initiative. There is a, a, a bipartisan support in, 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 in this to some degree. Uh, obviously, we don't have quite as many Metro members support us, but there is some rural Democrats and, and citizen, you know, farmers, uh, those type of people definitely support this. And um, um, with that, I am going to let some of the rest of my colleagues have a couple of minutes here. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, thank you, um, Representative Barr, for bringing this bill. And it's a pleasure to be a co-author on this bill to add the Second Amendment to our state constitution, certainly a deficiency that exists. Armed citizens keep the government honest. Throughout history, from the left to the right, our country's leaders have articulated the importance of the preservation of our freedoms to keep and bear arms. On the left, Alexander Hamilton said, the Constitution shall never be construed to prevent peaceable citizens from keeping their own arms. In the center, George Washington said, a free people ought to be armed. And on the right, Ted Nugent said, when the law disarms the good guys, the bad guys rejoice. People uh, and, and members here today, today hoplophobia is rampant. The fear of firearms born from widespread unfamiliarity with them is driving good people to propose policy changes that can only result in bad outcomes. As legislators in response to violent acts that happen to involve firearms, we see hoplophobia play out in our culture. The most common irrational reaction to these violent acts of evil is do something. Government must do something. That something too often contemplates policy proposals that contribute to the disarming of law-abiding citizens. The false and empty notion that government will somehow prevent violent people from carrying out their violence by disarming nonviolent people has repeatedly failed. The government has confiscated most of the guns in London, and now the city, now that city leads the world in knife murders. In 2018, that city, in that city, London, over 5,000 people were admitted to the hospital with knife wounds, with a significant number of them dying. Currently, House Democrats are proposing bills that include additional background checks on legal gun sales and outright disarming of law-abiding citizens by our government. Background checks lead to databases. Databases lead to registration. Registration leads to confiscation. And history clearly shows us that confiscation leads to horror. Taking firearms away from good people only gives advantages to evil people who are very small in their number and never follow our laws. 
Witness the destruction that gun control policies of gun-free zones have levied upon the way too many innocent people in our country and state. The Second Amendment to the U.S. Constitution is a freedom that guarantees the rest of our freedoms. The Minnesota Constitution is lacking in that same important protection. Adding this important constitutional guarantee will help prevent future legislatures from taking for making emotionally derived reactionary snap decisions that result in more harmful policies sold to the people through empty promises. It's time to correct this foundational deficiency to our principal governing document. Well, I'm, I'm Representative Jeremy Munson from District 23B, and I'll make this really short. Uh, there's been a lot of uh, uh, outpour in, in, in favor of the Second Amendment. Um, I support this, and it's time we need this in our state constitution. Okay. Anyone else? Sir. I'm good. Okay. Then if we're all good, I'll go ahead questions. and uh, take any questions. I do want to uh, make sure that people know that this is this is something that's. Uh, uh, as Representative Jess Krauske mentioned, this is the, the one thing that protects all of the other rights that we have. The freedom of the press, the freedom of speech, the freedom of assembly, the freedom to live your life how you see fit. We should not, as a government body, be taking away liberties, but giving liberties to the people so that they may live their lives how they choose to see them. When bad people are the only one, when people who don't follow the laws are the only people that are armed, we will soon be nothing but a lawless society looking for more police control over every aspect of our life, and that's going the wrong direction in my mind. We need to have free people taking, uh, making dishonest decisions about their lives instead of trying to make more people of the state of Minnesota criminals. And with that, I'll be happy to answer any questions. You mentioned some bipartisan support. You know, who who uh, on the actually side? signed on to the bill right now? Yeah. I do not have anybody signed on to the bill, but I have talked to uh, some, some of the met Metro Democrats that have uh, expressed support for this, that, that would possibly vote for this when it hits the floor. Yes. Uh, I understand that you believe that it's a, by principle, it's a deficiency in our Constitution, our state Constitution, but the Second Amendment federally seems to be very safe right now. This court, Supreme Court, does not appear likely to overturn it. Do you set, is there any urgent need for this now? Well, you did mention a couple of key words there right now with the court we currently have. But that's not the court we had 20 years ago, and it's not the court we're going to have 20 years in the future. Um, each president gets to shape the court as, as justices come and go off of the Supreme Court. Each, each, just, or each president gets to nominate people that bring his, his or her values to the court. Uh, so no, this is not something that's go, that is protected forever. In the, as we know, courts ebb and flow in their decisions. Um, I feel it's a deficiency for all of the other duplicated things that are in our state constitution that are also in our federal constitution. Um, uh, last week, we rolled out a, a freedom of copied parts of the uh, First Amendment for, uh, because there are currently only legislators and the press have the freedom of speech. But we, so we thought that the people should have that, thing, that same protection and freedom of religion, those same type of protections. Uh, there, there are numerous the judiciary, the, the freedom of uh, court uh, warrants, things like this. There are a myriad of different uh, items that are duplicated between the federal and the state constitution. And we've handed that out, I think. Yeah, we have had that as a handout. If you need it again, we can. And I'd like to, I'd like to also make a statement on our state representative, Tim Miller, 17A. Uh, you mentioned the word urgency. I don't, I don't know if that's the, the best word, but I do think that it's an important issue right now. We have people in our district that are in our districts that are communicating to us constantly that they feel that this right of theirs is under threat, both at the state and federal level. So uh, we need to put this assurance in the Constitution, and we need to speak very clearly to those people who are showing these concerns that we're going to take a stand against what we see coming through the legislature this year. Can you specify a little bit those folks who are reaching out to you with their concerns? Are those, they're hearing about legislation coming forward, therefore they're worried their rights will be infringed upon? Do you have a specific case where a Minnesotan's right to bear arms was impacted because this is not in the Constitution at present? Yeah, I think there's been lots of news reports over the last couple of years, but this year specifically there has been bills 
that have been expressly moved forward and they're moving through the legislature right now that's causing concerns, whether it be the red flag law, um, whether it be uh, universal background checks, which is really a universal database. Uh, the people are seeing through this. They've been very educated up on this issue. And when they see this, these items going through the legislature, that's our job as representatives when someone contacts us and shows concern, you know, what's going on? What do you think is going to happen? And while I think many of these gun control laws in the end will probably not be signed into law, they have full capability to do so at this time. And so we believe that this is, this is if you will, something that we can do proactively moving forward to protect those rights. So you believe that this amendment, the right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed, would in fact nullify the red flag proposal? So I'm not the constitutional attorney here. What's uh, your vote? My anticipation is that absolutely it will, it will reinforce that. Now, of course, there's, this wouldn't be the first time that something gets signed into law that maybe is unconstitutional. That's what the courts are there for to determine. So could there be a process moving forward? Perhaps uh, we would hope that this would subdue uh, uh, the interest of moving forward with some of those bills. But if they move forward and got through the legislature and signed by the governor into law, I would want them to be challenged in the courts, and this amendment would certainly, certainly, I believe, defeat them at that point. It, the s same wording at the federal level has not defeated um, background checks and red flag laws to date. I mean, certainly not background checks. We've had those for handguns in various states for decades. Uh, what makes you think the same language in a Minnesota constitution would change that? Well, I, I think the better answer is, is I'm a state representative, and so my purview is basically to address and defend the Constitution of Minnesota, certainly the Constitution of the United States as well. But I have my influence at this level. And you can certainly see other instances where the Minnesota Supreme Court has made a decision. It doesn't go beyond that, and it just kind of sits there as, as basically what the law becomes through case law. And so we need to be able, you know, not everything that gets heard through the state level makes it to the U.S. Supreme Court, certainly, and that. So we need to be able to control what we can control at this time. Let me add to that. Yep, go ahead. You know, as, as state legislators, we are here to um, carry out the will of our constituents. And uh, we've been hearing loud and clear uh, from our constituents their fear that there might be efforts in the legislature to uh, take away their right to keep and bear arms. This is the best way we know how to give them the ability as citizens to express in our top governing document of our state their desire to protect their rights to do so. So that's that's why we're bringing here today. If I can try this in another way then, um, <clears throat> shall not be infringed, I think many people, not all, but many people regard that as shall not be infringed, but can be regulated. Do you believe that current regulations that exist would violate shall not be infringed if it became part of the Minnesota well, Constitution? Well, person is the uh, right to carry and yeah. the background checks that yeah. that I, I mean, I guess we will find that we, if, when this is adopted, and, and some of us are wanting to keep after this for a long time so that our citizens have the ability to express this in their Constitution, uh, but our courts will decide that. Uh, individually and as a legislator, it is my hope that, yes, some of our um, some of our infringements that are already written into law will be called out by a future court to say that, guess what? Um, this language uh, in the Constitution says you can't do that. And uh, I guess future will only say uh, what that would be, uh, but I'm hopeful that that'll happen to at least to some extent. Can you give some examples of those things that are currently in law? Well, uh, you know, I'm not going to go through examples here today. I'm not prepared to, to look at them, but I do know we have a bunch of them in law. Uh, maybe Mr. Dor can outline some. Uh, uh, and by the way, he, he would like to talk anyway, so let's bring, <laughs> let's, let's bring Rob in. Yeah, to yeah, so the first question uh, about the, the current restrictions. Once something is applied as a constitutional right, there's a, there's a very high standard that's applied to the restrictions of civil liberties. There's a strict scrutiny standard. Right now, in order for us to evaluate the a strict scrutiny standard, we have to bring a case all the way up to the Supreme Court. 
bringing this, this amendment into our uh, Minnesota Constitution allows us to go through the Minnesota court processes, uh, which, which essentially allows us to evaluate all of these, all of these laws that we've got on here, whether it be the, the, the fees required for a permit to carry, uh, whether that is, a, is, is an infringement, is a barrier of entry to the exercise of a constitutional right, whether it's the training requirements, uh, whether it's uh, the, the extent of a permit to purchase, what, what situations that is and isn't required. There's a whole myriad of things that we are able to review with a new lens of strict scrutiny from the state constitution that we can't that would, would essentially require us to bring a federal case. And things like background checks and red flag laws have not had a federal case yet. That's a very expensive endeavor. That's a very uh, time consuming endeavor. It takes years and sometimes decades to get a court, uh, to get a case all the way through the, you know, the Court of Appeals and up to the, up to the Supreme Court. And uh, this allows us to, to examine our Minnesota Constitution and the rights enshrined to us within the Minnesota Constitution uh, at a local level, at a statewide level. Can you point to a case in a state that does have this language in the Constitution where one of these proposals has gone up to the state Supreme Court and potentially been struck down? Yeah, that, that's an excellent question. I, I, I wasn't prepared to answer that, but I do know there's some states uh, in uh, in the southern part that they have had certain uh, of these laws uh, that have uh, that have been approached at the constitutional level, and their own Supreme Courts have have determined that those laws uh, infringe upon it. And uh, I'll, I'll follow up with you a little bit more on that because uh, I, I wasn't. <laughs> that's a great question that I wasn't prepared for. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.